Well, good morning, everyone. I am Krista Harmon, and I am from the Kent Intermediate School District, and we are so glad to have you on our career chat today. We have Eric Gigas with us. He is a personal trainer and business owner with Eric, uh, Fit with Eric, and so we're excited to have him here and hear about his career path and some of the information, because we know a lot of young people find the idea of being a personal trainer very intriguing as a career, and so we're going to help you guys get some of the real information. Um, so that it helps you make a decision. So welcome, Eric. We're so glad you're here today. Thank you. So to get us started, Eric, I'm going to have, have you kind of go back to when you were 16 or 17 years old. Sure. And sure. is this what you thought you'd be doing? Tell us what oh, you were thinking no. and kind of <laughs> what that general <laughs> career path has been for you. Definitely not. So, I mean, when I was 16 or 17, I thought that I would be a doctor or just something crazy along those lines, you know, something I would go to school for eight years. And, and when I was getting to the point where I was graduating high school, I realized that was a path I didn't want to take. I didn't want to go to school for eight years. And I realized that very quickly, you didn't have to go to school for eight years to have a, you know, a good career. Um, I ended up going to college for graphic design and did not use that at all because by the time I had finished that, I fell in love with personal training. Uh, the reason I fell in love with personal training was most of the men in my family have health issues and heart conditions and other issues like that. So I was looking at ways to negate that for myself and by learning how to exercise properly and going through all these things, um, you know, I realized that quickly, you know, there's a lot of people out there that need help too. And not everybody knows what to do. And then it's a whole lot easier if you have somebody guiding you along. So I took all the right paths to, to get where I am. So I definitely did not think I'd be doing this. Not at all, not even remotely. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a process, but it's not that hard to get started either. Um, if you truly like have a passion for it, and that's really what I would just say to everybody. If you're looking at this, you should have a passion for health and fitness and learning because I learn something new every single day. So that's really, it sounds like when you were thinking about being a doctor way in the beginning, again, it was around those health issues that you saw the men in your family having and you wanted to be part of that solution. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as you went and realized, man, I don't want to be in school that long um, and started looking at your options, how did you start to figure out that personal training might be the right route versus some other maybe health careers that didn't take as much schooling, for example? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I'd already done my four years with college at this point. Um, I was pretty much done with college. Um, my experience with college was not amazing. Um, I did not like it. I did everything online. So if you're looking at that as an option right now. Um, you know, just know that it's maybe not the easiest thing in the world. You do have to do everything yourself, but it did give me a really good backbone for what I'm doing now. Uh, so it really set me up with a lot of success and being able to manage my time and work on my own and do things that I didn't have to, you know, rely on somebody else to do for me, which was super helpful. Um, but what ultimately led to that was I just love working out and I just love making sure that people have great form and I love pushing people to a new level. And I love seeing the results that they can get from being pushed that way. You know, you have a wide range of people that you're going to be working with in this kind of field. You've got people that are like very, very beginning, never worked out before in their lives, have no clue what to do. And you've got people who have been doing it for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years who are elite athletes and and you'll see if you if you get into this field, you want to kind of niche yourself into a smaller subset of what you want to work with. But having the ability to work with everybody is super helpful. And, and that was one of my things is I didn't want to be set into a niche where I could only work with one person or one type of person or one issue. I want to be able to handle all the issues. That way, if they come up while you're training somebody, because I mean, life happens, unfortunately. Um, you know, you might get an injury, you might get all these other things, but, but I mean, what led to it ultimately was just my love for exercise. It's, it's so good and so healthy. And I push myself without a personal trainer to the absolute limits inside of the gym. And I, I do that solely for the purpose of being able to do it for other people. Some people think that you can't have a job that you love. Like there has to be this work life, right? And then you have your passions. Yeah. So for you, that passion is what drove you towards this as a career. So when you realize, man, I love to work out. This is how I want to spend my time. What, is, what does one do then to actually get the credentials or do you even need credentials? Like how, does, how do you get started then? Do you have to go to college or get special training for this? Technically, yes. And technically, no. So there's, there's two options that you can do. All right. If you want to be insured, and I highly suggest you want to be insured, um, that way, if you do have any issues, anybody gets injured with you, you know, lawsuits happen, unfortunately, you know, you see it all the time, people sue. 
uh, for anything nowadays. But if something happens, and if you've got a good rapport with clients, it's not going to, you know, because injuries do happen. You can't watch absolutely everything that's going on. And you can't stop somebody if they're jumping from hurting themselves properly. You know, it, it's, there's a lot that goes into it. But if you want to be insured, you need a certification. The certification can come from a wide range of places. But what I would caution you to do is to make sure that it is NCCA accredited. That's uh, the National Conditioning for Credentials Association. And what they're going to do is they're going to basically look at all those programs and make sure that they're good. If you get one of those certifications, you should be able to work if you want to work for somebody in any field um, with uh, personal training anywhere. There are a handful. I personally am currently certified through ACTION, that's A-C-T-I-O-N, but I've also been certified through ACE, and I've also been certified through NASM, that's N-A-S-M, the National Academy for Sports Medicine. The NASM is the most widely recognized for anywhere. Um, it's the hardest one to pass as well because they can ask you any question from the book. So you're gonna get a book from them, you're gonna get online information, you're gonna go over all the information, you're gonna read everything yourself. Um, there are uh, flashcards and a ton of other things that you can do to help yourself pass those tests, but you do have to go take a proctored exam. After you take that proctored exam, you'll get your certification. You get your certification, then you have to get insurance. You also have to be CPR and AED certified in order to even get the uh, credential. So once you've got that, you can work anywhere, but obviously experience is always more important. So make sure that you have experience in the field too. Make sure you are working out yourself already, learning as much as you possibly can, taking everything that you can from those books um, and information that you're getting from the internet and compile it all. Never stop learning because everything changes. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a wide, wide field. Uh, and we don't just handle working out. Uh, we can handle nutrition to a point. Uh, obviously, we're not certified nutritionists, but I do have an advanced cert certification in nutrition personally, and that allows me to do some things that I normally wouldn't be able to do in a more safe manner. You can learn all these things on the internet that you want, but make sure that you know how they work on yourself in practice. I take everything I teach everybody and practice it myself and make sure that it does do what it's supposed to do because, you know, just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> but uh, that's how you're going to get certified. Just pick what you want to go for, go for, go through NASM, ACE, Action. There's a bunch of other ones as well. If you go to college, you can also get certified um, through them, which they're going to send you to one of these credentialing associations. But you can also go for kinesiology or physical uh I think there's a couple other ones. Kinesiology is the biggest one that you're going to go into. And that's just the study of how the human body moves. Uh, I would highly suggest that if you are planning on going to college and this is the field you want to get into, that would be your, your path to take to get at least a BA, a bachelor's uh, in that, in kinesiology. It's going to teach you how everything moves. I've gone through all that stuff personally and just like read all the information and and adapted it to what I do, as opposed to taking myself back to college and getting that certain it's, it's just extra work for me at that point. I'm a highly motivated person. I'm going to take all that and just do it myself. But if you're going to college and you want to do this for the rest of your life, I highly suggest kinesiology is the path. Uh, you're going to learn everything. You're going to learn how things move properly and you're going to learn like what your connect chains are and what works with what and how to properly move those things. Um, and then how to put that into action for others. Cause I think for some young people that I talk to, they're trying to decide kind of they have this maybe a they're athletic or they want to be in the sports field so they're trying to decide between like being a physical therapist mm -hmm. being an athletic trainer a personal trainer so because some of them are kind of closely related in some ways um and even our physical therapist yesterday mentioned you know some of those undergrads can be a kinesiology or a four-year athletic training um how did you know that was the right route for you versus sure. some of the other ones yeah, so I mean, ultimately for, for physical therapy, obviously you have to go to college and you have to have a certification, or excuse me, uh, a degree in the medical field. I didn't already have that personally, so I already knew that was out unless I wanted to go back and you know spend another two years in college to get at least an associate's in that. Um, and that was just not something I wanted to do personally. I'd already spent my time in college, like I said, so I didn't want to go back for that. But having that as an option is always good. Um, I, when you go for physical therapy, you're working with people who are already injured in general. So you're trying to repair an issue that they have or trying to get them to move, or maybe they just had surgery and you know you have to repair the muscles, but you're still building the muscles just like we would 
as a personal trainer. Generally, I work with a not quite healthy population up to a very healthy population. So I'm still making sure that people are progressing in health through what they're doing and trying to keep them as healthy as possible. And obviously other people have goals. If you're an athlete, you want to get stronger in certain areas and you want to be better at certain things. So that was kind of my passion was making people better and making sure that they get out of not the already injured zone, but the maybe I'm really close to being injured or maybe I have some health issues zone into a, a zone where they feel like they can live normal, healthy, move better, feel better, have a better mindset um, as they're going on in their lives. So that was just the passion for me because I did take myself from not being so happy all the time and not being in great shape to where I am today. I think that's a really important conversation to have as young people are discerning what piece of it they like. Because like you said, it's, it's the preventative side or it's they've already been injured in the fix it side. And then there's kind of that in between. So that was just really helpful for, I think, for the young people to hear kind of that thinking process for you. And like you said, you'd already done the four years, so you didn't want to have to go back to college. And so for young people to know that the certifications are a way to get their credentials, you need to actually do the job. And that is for many careers. Young people don't realize that sometimes it's often the certification that can get you in. Um, even my career itself, it's a certification that will keep pushing me forward, not any additional degrees. And especially with college debt, I mean, that's real, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you get these credentials. And so, yeah, tell us what, like, your first job, do you apply at the Y? Like, where does even one, who hires folks and gives people a sense of the different environments that you can actually do this kind of work besides just a straight out gym? So there are a wide range of places you can go to, um, which is awesome because any place that you're going to work out is, is generally going to need a personal trainer. Um, but there are multiple ways that you can work in this field. You can work as a one-on-one -on -one trainer, a small group trainer, um, and there are different types of group settings. You can do large groups as well. And that's where I ended up recently. But um, I did one-on-one -on -one training for quite some time beforehand. Uh, Fit with Eric is, is new as far as where I'm at presently, but I did use that back when I lived in Tennessee and I trained there as well. So I've owned my business, I own business twice at this point. Um, in Tennessee, I, I, like I said, I did one-on-one. -on -one. I worked for a couple of different places. Um, so just general gyms. And, and I don't say work for in, in the fashion where like, you know, your employee where you go in there. Most of the time when you go into these places, they're gonna hire you as a 1099 contracted employee. What that means is you don't pay taxes on what they take, you know, pay you until the end of the year. So that's important information to note. Um, that's almost every place I've ever worked or worked for. As so a being an trainer. independent contractor yes. is what some people need to understand that you're, yes. you're being your own business person going in and they're hiring you as a, as a subcontractor. Right. Um, I could break down how that works a little bit further if you want to later. That way they have a better idea for it, but we won't jump into that just yet. Um, so I worked for a couple places like that. I also worked for uh, a company that replaced people who needed like a vacation. So if you have a set of trainers that generally work for your job. Like if you're in the health field, the places that I went to were uh, like nurses or, you know, small businesses or even up to large businesses where they had a gym inside of their, their place of, of business. Uh, they would have a trainer on staff or two trainers on staff. So I would go and actually replace them when they wanted their vacation. So for a week or two, uh, I would take over their duties, which was nice. But I would have to have a wide range, and that's kind of the important part here, is having a wide range of abilities, um, all the way from individual one-on-one -on -one training, yoga, group training, knowing how to push people, because they'd already had a set schedule for what they would do. Um, and that's why I keep telling everybody, if you're gonna get in this field, don't stop learning. Go to all these classes that you can, learn everything you can from them, and then try to master what you can at home even. You, you don't have to have every certification and everything that you wanna do. That's the important thing. You do have to continue to learn. You do have to show that you're continuing to learn to keep your, your certification as you're doing this. But, you know, just, just keep pushing yourself through everything you can. With just one certification, you can literally teach anything, which is good to know. Uh, you're just gonna have to continue to, you know, actually learn it. Don't go into a yoga place and say you can teach yoga if you don't know how to do yoga, right? <laughs> That's not gonna work out extremely well. Uh, but it, it's, 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 it's a process you know, what, what's going on. So back to the original question. Um, so you have a wide range of places that you can work. So one-on-one -on -one is great. Any, any gym should be hiring personal trainers. Um, 
smaller gyms are, in my opinion, better to work for because you're going to get paid better. That's important information to know. Uh, large commercial gyms usually take a larger cut because they have a lot of overhead. So there's a lot of things that they have to pay for. Um, plus they have a lot of employees, plus it's corporate. So you're not going to get paid as well as you technically should. And then you've got yoga studios, um, CrossFit gyms, which that's important to note. That's a completely different process. You can go with a personal training certification to get in there, but they're going to want you to get certified through CrossFit as well. It's a completely different beast. Um, and then you've got places like, um, I used to work for uh, Burn Boot Camp. So Burn Boot Camp required certification. And then you have anywhere from medium to large groups where you're working with. Um, I was with them for a little close to two years. Uh, and it's, it's, just, it's completely different. Like if you want to get into it and you want to learn the most, that is the setting I would suggest more than anything. I learned more from my time there in two years than I did the previous six when I was training elsewhere. And I think there's even things like working for a corporate, kind of the corporate <laughs> fitness trainer, right? Where maybe a big company has their own people on staff working with their employees. I'm just saying there's just a beautiful yeah. wide variety, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I did. Like I said, in Tennessee, I went and replaced those trainers who would be on staff. They would work there. They'd do a nine to five job, just like anybody else. They'd set up specific training programs. Um, they could do one-on-one -on -one training with individuals and small groups. Um, so just having the ability to be malleable, you know, you want to be able to be molded into different positions is going to be super helpful. Be flexible in what you're doing because everything changes every minute. And, you know, one minute you could be in a place where you're doing single, single person training and, you know, you might have five people that come up to you one day and say, Hey, can you do all five of us at once here? And you're going to have to have that ability if that's something that you want to do, obviously. Um, you know, you can, you can very well say, I only want to do one person at a time. I only want to hang out with one person at a time, worry about one person at a time and you can still be successful, but you know, would you have to have different certifications or any other credentials to work for like the NFL or the NBA to be, do they have their own personal trainers? Yes and no. Um, I would say that positions where they're, they're, they're looking to work with athletes. One, being a former athlete yourself is super important. They want to know that you have the ability because I mean, quite frankly, who's going to listen to somebody who hasn't done it. Right. And then two, having a four year degree in kinesiology or something else is helpful, but not necessary. Honestly, this is just, it's, it's an art form more than it is anything else. Anybody can do a squat if you show them how to do it properly and they teach themselves how to do it and they train hard enough to do it. Not everybody can teach somebody else how to do a squat though. That's the, that's the, the differentiation I'd, I'd say you want to take away from it. So as long as you show the ability to do the things yourself and show that you have success in what you do, you should be able to work for them with any type of credential. But... Once again, this is a corporate role that we're talking about. So, you know, they do look at a lot of other things involved in there. Sometimes it's a four year degree, but honestly, if you've been a trainer for 10 years and proven yourself, and let's just say it's Keanu Reeves that you've been training, <laughs> and, you know, they're going to look at that and go, okay, maybe we should hire this guy. Yeah. It seems like networking would definitely be a big piece of that. Like who, you know, or the connections that you might have to kind of move you into some of those kind of elite. Mm -hmm. Tell us about a lot of kids want to know about like how much money people make and not that you have to tell us that cause they can look that up on the internet. But when you're being a subcontractor that 1099, is there, for some people they want that straight paycheck. How did you kind of manage that flow of having clients, you know, working for different organizations? Was there some stability or was that kind of the challenging part at the beginning? So that's definitely a challenging part. Um, you're going to want to know this. This is super important. It's not always cut and dry, right? So if you're a 1099 contractor or if you're working for yourself, you pay your taxes at the end of the year. You have to set money aside to pay those, right? You can't just take all your money that you made, your paycheck and go, hey, this is my money. Some of it's got to go to the government, unfortunately, but you have to, you know, kind of take that out. Usually I do 30% of my pay just goes into another fund. That 30% I know will pay my taxes. So I get 70% of everything I make. That's how I base all of my rates too. I'm at a point in my life where I can base my rates off of what I know how to do and what makes sense for my clients. That way, you know, I'm still making enough money. You're going to make anywhere from starting out 30, maybe $40,000 a year. Um, and that's after you pay taxes um, all the way up to, honestly, I know trainers that make over a million dollars a year. It just depends on who you're working with, what your client base looks like and where you are presently inside of that. You can start out tomorrow 
And if you already have a good following on social media and you show that you know what you're doing, you could have a huge blow up and you could make a lot of money. And it's all based on what you can do and being personable with people. Uh, having sales experience is super helpful too. Um, that was my past prior to training. Um, I did a lot of sales. So having the ability to talk to people and be on their level and understand them and you know just being able to talk is, is super, super good. If you're gonna go into a setting where you're gonna train people and you can't speak very well, um, I would highly suggest that you get the skills first. You know, something is better than nothing as far as that goes. You know, I can talk to I can talk to anybody, anytime, anywhere, about anything and still seem like I know what I'm talking about, even if I don't. And that's the that's the key. Well, I do. I think that's a, like I said, a key piece of being a kind of a salesperson or having that ability because it seems like psychology is really important to you just working with different types of clients, obviously yes. communication. You're a teacher um, as part of your skill set. So lots of beautiful um, qualities that make you who you are. So tell us about that social media side. How much of that uh, keeping your business going do you have to be represented out there? How do you cultivate that for yourself? Tell us about that. Well, let's face it, uh, in, in today's day and age, uh, the Yellow Pages doesn't really exist anymore. I don't know if you, you kids know what the Yellow Pages I'll say is. They probably don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm aging myself right now. <laughs> um, so, I mean, if you don't know what a Yellow Pages is, obviously, nobody uses that anymore. You have Google. All right? Google has replaced the Yellow Pages. You want to know what a business is? You look through Google. Right? How do you get higher up in Google? One, have your own web page or Facebook page. Two, have a lot of traffic towards it. And three, have good search engine optimization so that people see, hey, if I look for personal trainer in Grand Rapids, somebody's name is gonna pop up up top first. You normally click on the first, second, or third person that you see, and you don't go any further than that. So that's important, right, for new business. But the biggest thing you can do for personal training, honestly, is word of mouth. Having other people get you more business. That is how I've always run my business. And as long as you stay in one area, you're gonna have success with that. And obviously you're gonna to want to be known for something there. Like, hey, I train these people, or I train this group set, or whatever. Mine personally is, I've trained over 200 women um, over at Burn Boot Camp, so they know that I specialize in training women, which is awesome, because they know I'm gonna kick their butts and they're gonna get a great workout. <laughs> Absolutely. And then it's the word of mouth, like you said. If you're working with 200 women and mm -hmm. then they have friends who are looking to get in shape or they want to, then that's how your business starts to grow and build. Mm -hmm. And then you're not having to solicit uh, customers as much, I would assume. Absolutely. And I mean, social media is just huge as well. Anything you can do to get it out there, you know, is, is going to be great. And I want to tell everybody this as well. This is super important. If you're going to do this and you're going to put yourself out on social media, Talk about what you want to talk about and be yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to be somebody from TikTok. Don't try to be somebody from YouTube. Don't try to emulate. You can use the things that they use, right? But be yourself. Authenticity is super important, especially in this field, because if you're coming off fake, people will know that you're coming off fake, right? So just be as, as authentic and normal and yourself as much as possible anytime you can, especially interacting with people. That way they know what to expect you know who you are and it doesn't matter what you believe in just just believe in something yeah that's great and you've obviously shared a lot of your passion um during our first part of this we only have five minutes left but i'd love to again students can look up some of the regular data from the mm -hmm. internet about your job but you know what mistakes have you made along the way eric and what have cool. you learned from those what would you like them to know about that there's so many mistakes. I want you to know that you need to have mistakes, first of all. If you don't have mistakes and you're just winning constantly, you don't want to appreciate the wins. Two, learn anything. Or three, have any life experience at that point. Because quite frankly, if you're just winning constantly, that just doesn't happen. Life is an up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. As long as you're trending up, you're going to be good. Um, but make the mistakes, use the mistakes, learn from the mistakes. I have had so many mistakes that have, have happened along the way. When I first started, I I didn't really think about the 1099 thing, obviously. Um, so I did not set enough money aside. So I had to work into the next year to pay off the IRS, mistake number one. Mistake number two, obviously, is you know not doing enough social media, not learning from my mistake with that at first, and then having to do more. Mistake three, this, this one kind of sounds terrible, but you know trust yourself more than anything. Trust your gut on what you want, and know that you have the ability to not work with certain people if you're doing this. You have the choice. If people aren't putting in the work, if they're not gonna do the job, because you can't do everything for them, know that it's okay to cut them out, right? If somebody's gonna be, you know, they show up late, they don't do the work, they have no results and they complain, that's not gonna be a good thing for you 
as a person because you're constantly worried about that. And two, you're just not going to see results with that person. And what you want, you know, your results are your resume. And just know that it's okay that you don't have to please everybody. Just be happy for yourself and do what you can for them. And if they can't snap out of it, you know, just move on. It's okay. They will find another trainer or do whatever they need to do. So one of the students wants to know, like, the whole business side, because this was kind of a mystery to me too. Like, how do you even know how to start a business? Like, how do you know how to hang your shingle? And do you have to go to school to that part? Right. I did not go to school for it. Um, I am a pretty savvy person in general. I, I, I don't like to toot my own horn about it, but, you know, being intelligent does help. Knowing what you want and then searching out the information is super important. Um, I had to pivot and we were talking about this before we even started. I had to pivot because of COVID, uh, to doing online training, which is not something that I'm akin to. I like to train people in person. So I actually had to turn to somebody who's done this before and get a mentor to teach me how to do things properly online. That way I was successful instead of not having that. But previously, you know, to that, honestly, trial and error is going to be your biggest motivator. And I want you to know that you should fail at things. If you, you have to fail at things and just learn from your failures. And that's the easiest way. Life experience and learning from the things that you don't do well and making them your strengths is going to push you to fix that. And it's okay. If you lose money, that's all right. Guess what? Money comes back. You just don't want to lose yourself in the process and don't get, you know, detracted or, you know, worried about, Hey, you know, this isn't working. You know, if it's not working, you just change it. And that's, that's kind of like my key to life is if something's not working, you can't continue to do it again and expect a different result ever. You're going to have to change it up. And that, that goes with everything that you're going to do in personal training, because you can tell somebody to squat as many times as you want and keep queuing them up. But unless you show them and teach them, it's not going to happen. You got to do the same thing to yourself and know that you're just going to have to learn process after process after process. And it never stops, but it's okay because you're becoming a better person doing that. That's good stuff. Good stuff for sure. So yeah, as far as the business side too, when I hung my shingle, it, it's getting a mentor or someone who can show you the way. There's some small business organizations. Mm -hmm. and I have to laugh, Eric, because I didn't put enough money away my first year for my 1099 either and got screwed. So I, I know what you mean on that one. So we have one minute left. Um, and I want to just have you share your final word of wisdom with these young people. And then I'm going to um, share my screen because I have um, your email address, which you've sure. been grateful or you've been very generous to let them have if they have any follow-up questions that mm -hmm. they're able to um contact you absolutely so, so now. yeah yeah my final word of wisdom that i tell this to everybody um this is this is kind of like my saying here uh, but positive action creates positive change which will get you positive results and you always want to be positive, positive, positive. Negativity does not get you anywhere. Being worried about things doesn't get you anywhere. And I know we all do it. I know we all worry about things all the time. But if you come at life with a positive attitude and take positive things from all of your situations and learn as much as you can, you're going to be a whole lot stronger and better of a person and succeed more in life than if you keep looking at the negative side of things. So positive actions create positive change. We want that positive change in our lives always. Even if you think things are going great, you can always be a little bit better. Yeah, that's, that's gold. I hope the students are hearing that for sure. So students, that, um, that's been a great half hour. It goes so fast, doesn't it? So fitwitheric at gmail.com. So follow up with him. I hope that you're motivated to do some additional research too. And I wanted to give you two different websites that I think will be helpful to you. Roadtripnation.com. If you go to that site and hover over career expiration and then click on interests, by different categories, you can see little videos just like we did today about other people's careers. So go to that kind of health and fitness area, learn about the different careers because the more educated you are, the better decision you can make. And get online and you know, and say, how do you become a personal trainer? Read more and more and more. Eric gave us such a great uh, base today, but onetonline.org is a great website to get some of the nuts and bolts of personal training and kind of the ins and outs from the factual side. So I recommend this website also for your career research. Um, Leah is going to be sharing a um, 
survey. This is a pilot program. We want to know if this is helpful to you guys, if we should continue this in the fall. So please take them just a minute to fill out that survey and let us know what your experience was like today. Uh, Eric, it's just been great having you. It's been great to hear your story. Um, I can see why you do well in your career. You're very um, inspiring, motivational. I'm ready to go out and get outside right now, although it's still raining on my side of town. Oh, um, man. <laughs> so yeah, so thank you so much for sharing today. You're welcome. And uh, I hope you have a good week. Oh, thank you. You as well. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today.